Good morning students. We are discussing on pavement design and highway construction. Our today's topic that is the design of highway pavement and that is specifically of the flexible pavement. Before going to design a pavement, first of all we should learn that what are the factors that affect that design of pavement. So starting the lecture with the first topic that is factors affecting the pavement design. So the first factor that affect the pavement design that is design life of that pavement. The design life or the performance period refers to the period of time for which the initial design pavement structure will last before any rehabilitation needed where the level of serviceability is the criteria for the pavement design the design life is the time elapsed as a new reconstructed or rehabilitated pavement structure it is to be noted that the design life or the performance period can be dependent to a very large extent on the type and level of maintenance we provide over the design life. The next factor that affect the pavement design that is the reliability. Okay, so what is reliability? Basically the term reliability stands for the probability that any particular type of distress will remain below or within the permissible level. This concept incorporates a certain amount of certainty that the design pavement will serve satisfactorily during the entire design life. The next factor that affect the pavement design that is the traffic factor. In the traffic factor, the pavement is dealing with the number of vehicles and when there are a number of vehicles it affects that its wheel load the reputation of wheel the position of wheel load all these parameters affect the pavement talking about the wheel load the pavement wheel load causes the stresses and strain in the pavement layer and the tire pressure it determines the area of the application. The wheel load is dependent on the type of vehicle. For what vehicle you are designing the pavement will affect on the its design criteria. The next is the impact of that load. The imperfection in surface and at the joints that will cause the additional load due to impact. Because at the joints or we can say where we are uh, continuing the pavement at such stages the vehicle will exert the impact load on the pavement surface and that also can damage the starting of that particular slab and the upper surface of the pavement the next is reputation of load or reputation of wheels apart from the single wheel load the cumulative load application during the design life cause the plastic loads and the elastic deformation. Now the next is the position of wheel load. Where the wheel load is applied and at which position it applied. The concentration of wheel load at the localized width of across the pavement. The pavement will cause the extra distress. Now the next factor that is the climate factor. Climate also affect the design criteria of the pavement. If the climate factor is rainy or there is a rainfall, the, that rainfall will affect the pavement drainage and can thus be a significant factor. If there is a frost section, okay, the frost heave can disrupt the pavement structure as it contract the joints. In if we talk about the temperatures. The variation of temperature can cause the stresses in the pavement. The next 
main factor that affects the pavement design is road geometry. However, you are providing horizontal curves or you are designing it for the vertical profiles that also matters the pavement design criteria. If applying the horizontal curves, the pavement on the horizontal curves are subjected to extra stresses and pavements at the junctions are typical examples of such horizontal profiles. If we talk about the vertical profiles, the pavements on the grades are subjected to extra forces due to acceleration and or the deceleration and the braking action. After that, the subgrade strength and the drainage is also a factor that affect the pavement design. If we talk about the subgrade strength, the subgrade soil type and the compacted density significantly affect the pavement design. And if we talk about the drainage, the surface and subsurface drainage of the pavement from adjoining land also it affect the subgrade strength and and hence the pavement design out of this all factors there is a material properties is also a factor that affect the structural design of pavement okay and for uh, for examining that material for selecting that material we are generally uh, choosing the CV, most severe value of those materials which can be applicable for that particular pavement structure so this was all about the factor affecting pavement design the next is the load that we generally consider for designing the pavement and that is the equiv and that is equivalent single wheel load now to carry the maximum load with the specified limit and to carry the greater load or the dual wheels or the dual tandem assembly is often used to carry the maximum load within the specified limit or to carry the greater load generally dual wheels or dual tandem assembly is often used the equivalent single wheel load is the single wheel load that having the same contact pressure which produces the same value of maximum stress, deflection, tensile stresses or the contact pressure at the desired depth. The procedure of finding the single wheel load for equal stress criteria, here we have and formula to find out that particular load to determine this particular formula there has been some assumption is made and those are that equivalency concept is based on the equal stress the contact pressure is always assumed as the circular second is the influence of that particular loads are considered at an angle of 45 degree and the soil medium is taken as a elastic homogeneous and isotropic so here we have the formula that log 10 of eswl is equal to log 10 p plus 0.301 log z upon d by 2 whole divided by log 10 of 2s upon d by 2 here you can see uh, there is a stress distribution diagram is also given wherein these lines are considered at a 45 degree okay the contact area okay that is considered as the circular area here okay and it is considered as that stress is equal on the surface now if we talk about this terminology that here you can see in the formula that is a p z and all thing so where capital p is the wheel load s is the center to center distance between the two wheels small d is the clear distance between two particular wheels and small z is the desired depth the next topic that is equivalent wheel load factor 
okay generally the accepted approach for the conversion of excel loads of different magnitudes in terms of a standard excel is by fourth power law and according to that there is a formula which is derived the equivalent wheel load is equal to given wheel load upon the standard wheel load raised to 4 here the macleod assume that the pavement thickness here MacLeod assume that the pavement thickness which are designed for a given particular wheel load would support 1 million repetition of such loads during the life of that pavement or we can say the design life. For one load application the pavement thickness so required only one fourth the pavement thickness. So designed for 10 lakh load repetition that we consider as a 1 million load repetition okay the next topic that is the vehicle damage factor this is most important factor that we considered for the design of pavement the vehicle damaging factor is a multiplier for converting the number of commercial vehicles of different axle loads and the axle configuration to the number of excel to the number of standard excel load repetition it defines as equivalent number of standard axles per commercial vehicle the vdf varies with the excel configuration excel loading the terrain the type of road and from region to region the excel load equivalency factors are used to convert the different excel loads reputation into the equivalent standard excel load reputation so that whenever we are designing the pavement those excel consideration excel load consideration is converted with this vehicle damaging factor so how we can convert that for that we have few uh, formulas that single axle load with the single wheel on either side of the vehicle. So for that, that conversion factor is axle load that is what exerting that divided by 65 raised to 4. And same, same way for single axle with the dual wheel and the tandem axle with dual wheel plus the tridem axle with the dual wheel. So, all this category of the vehicles have their own factor for con convert into the equivalent standard Excel load. For converting one reputation of a particular type of Excel carrying a specific Excel load that into equivalent reputation of 80 kN that is of single Excel with the dual wheel. For that equation 1 2 equation 4 may be used since the axle load equivalency factor is reported from the ASHO road test for the flexible pavement as well as the rigid pavement are not significantly different for heavy duty pavements it is assumed that this vehicle damaging factor value estimated for checking the subverted rotting and the bituminous layer for fatting cracking that can be used for checking the fatting damage of cement base layers so with that we are concluding today's lecture thank you so much friends for your kind attention we'll see you in the next lecture